I have to solve the mysteries behind Geometry Dash's greatest rivalry. A battle which ended several years ago when the top competitor Cyclic confessed to cheating all of his accomplishments. His biggest rival, Riot, was shocked. No, it cannot be real. I've been competing with a hacker the whole time. Everyone was astonished, left with more questions than answers. Has Cyclic betrayed everyone? Who is truly the best Geometry Dash player? Over the years, these questions would seemingly be answered and millions have been told a legend that always ends the same way, with Riot as the undisputable victor. For a long time, certain details about this story seemed off to me. And as I started investigating, more and more questions seemed to be unanswered. But you probably have a question of your own. Why do thousands of people care about this rivalry in a casual mobile platformer so much? Well, it all started in August of 2013. Geometry Dash just came out on the App Store and instantly some of the first rivalries would form. Not between the game's top players, but in the schoolyard. My friend found Geometry Dash on the App Store and he was like, let's race on this game. We competed to beat all the main levels first. However, over time as the online Geometry Dash player community developed, there began to be two new main types of rivalries. Competitions between top players that would take everything to the next level. Our investigation begins in the Geometry Dash World Cafe, a primarily Korean form of players where Cyclic would first appear. While Cyclic must have quickly realized that he had to work hard if he wanted to be the best, he probably didn't realize that everyone at the top was a cheater. When Robtop introduced the Demon difficulty in the Star Leaderboards, many players of the GW forum started taking GD very seriously. It provides an in-game incentive for people to improve. If you ended up number one on the Star Leaderboard or the Creator Leaderboard, everybody would know your name. To get recognition, many people cheated to create and complete the hardest levels in the game. Another creator, Sono924, used an exploit to verify the Hell series. Four levels so difficult that they were not only demons, but considered by many to be extreme demons. By this time, demons were so difficult that players had to separate them into different tiers. The easiest at the bottom, with the insane and extreme demons sitting at the top. Only one player was capable of beating these extreme demons. This player was Seri. Nowadays, most people know him as a hacker, not only because of his improbable achievements like the Hellzone and Red World, but also because of his impossible achievement, the completion of Hate War. An impossible level that Seri released onto the servers for a few days before realizing his mistake and quickly deleting it. Seri was number one in the star leaderboard for months, beating more levels than anyone else. There were actual skilled players, but it seemed inevitable that they would all be overshadowed by Seri until the end of time. At least that was true, until Cyclic set his sights on the number one position. During this era, it's hard to tell if Cyclic was already a hacker. While he beat insane demons like Ice Cream and ranked number two behind Seri, he didn't do anything unrealistic. On the other hand, the hacker community posted and claimed to beat dozens of unrealistically difficult levels. I think if Cyclic did hack, I would have seen at least one suspicious poster claim from him. But I never did. I guess you could argue that his ability to consistently compete with a hacker was kind of weird. Surprisingly, Cyclic was able to dethrone Seri multiple times and he finally got to experience what it was like to be a top player. While Seri briefly reclaimed his throne, all the controversies had largely caught up to him. Seri decided to quit Geometry Dash out of frustration with the community's continuous allegations. Unfortunately for Cyclic, his chance of returning to the top was thwarted. Due to data loss, he would never be number one again. But this actually didn't matter. By this time, the community believed that the best GD player wasn't determined by who had the most stars, but rather who could slay the hardest demons. At the start of 2015, G-Boy released Cataclysm under controversial circumstances. I set out to investigate this level, as it was fated to begin Geometry Dash's greatest rivalry. Everybody, including myself, was confused because the preview videos were really quality. They they would slow up and speed down, and it was really weird. The level randomly came out one day, and everybody started getting suspicious because he sent a screenshot of him having 80,000 attempts to verify it. Even if G-Boy was a hacker, that would just make the accomplishment of beating Cataclysm all the more impressive. Over the following months, multiple cheaters would attempt to fabricate videos of themselves beating Cataclysm. However, these videos had flaws that investigators were quick to notice. 
there was a lot of people who were doing it because it was so easy back then. You use Cheat Engine to slow the game down and fix it in editing. But there were some things that people did not know that people like Michigan taught me about. And this was a way that you could spot all these cheaters and they had no idea, which was the orb pulsing thing. Orbs and pulsing objects changed to the song's volume. Some hackers were caught when their pulses didn't match legitimate recordings. This happened because back in the day, speed hacks didn't change sound speed. Cheaters try to account for this by editing the song into the video, but that can't hide the pulses going crazy for no reason. Another way people faked completions was splicing. So if there was a saw in view when somebody did a splice, there would be saws changing directions mid gameplay, which was dead giveaway. The prickly branches that get used in theory of everything, those are randomly generated every attempt, I'm pretty sure. And so if you splice, you can also see those branches and they will change. In reality, pretty much everyone struggled to survive Cataclysm. By March, many top players had dropped out of the race, leaving only four people who seemed capable. Interested spectators formed their own demon lists. The demon list is basically just a ranking of the most difficult levels. Players who got impressive records on these levels could submit their replays and get recognition from the community. At the top of this list was Cyclic, who had beaten seven of the hardest demons. He frequently posted progress updates on Cataclysm, and word of his skill began to spread far outside the Korean community. He rarely streamed. He'd never used the webcam for his videos or like any audio. Like, I didn't know what he sounded like. It was kind of like ominous, like a mysterious dude that was godlike at the game. On the other hand, Riot was already well known for challenging Aeon Air to see who could beat Deadly Clubstep first. Most expected Aeon to win, as he had far more experience while Riot was yet to prove he could even beat a hard demon. Eventually, after thousands of fails between the two players, a winner was decided. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! If he wanted to complete something, he was very determined on doing it and like nothing would distract him. He was like just a, a cold-blooded player. <laughs> Needless to say, Riot was competitive and he was looking to prove himself against Cyclic. By this time, Geometry Dash was released on Steam. Mobile players who switched noticed an improvement in their skills now that GD was more consistent and responsive. Among these players, Giron would improve the most from the Switch. He streamed Attempts of Cataclysm for dozens of hours on Twitch. His chat was hype because he was getting closer and closer to the end. The closest to this end was Sandstorm, who surprisingly held the world record for Cataclysm despite only having two of the hardest demons completed. The final 20% is the easiest part of Cataclysm by far. As the best player, Cyclic should have had no trouble passing it. I guess the pressure got to him. So close, yet so far. Riot, Sandstorm, and Giron would use this opportunity to catch up, but unexpectedly, Cyclic once again clawed his way to the last wave. I remember I was super upset when Cyclic beat Cataclysm first. This unbelievable run changed everything. Robtop himself said there was no evidence of this accomplishment being hacked and Cyclic would be world renowned as the undisputed best player. While the player base believed someone would eventually catch up to Cyclic, I bet nobody expected Andromeda to be that someone. Except for maybe Andromeda himself. In less than two weeks, Andromeda went from beating easy demons to somehow creating and verifying his own insane demon called Poltergeist. This level was part of a huge trend where creators would copy the flashing lights effect from Nine Circles and paste it into their own levels. Of the dozens of levels inspired by Nine Circles, Poltergeist was the most difficult. Andromeda wasn't even competing to beat Cataclysm. Rather, he chose to do something far more ambitious. Develop and verify the new hardest extreme demon. What you're seeing right now is the ultimate phase, a map handcrafted by 15 creators to be difficult enough to challenge Cataclysm. This was Andromeda's chance to prove he was one of the greats. He was beating all the hard levels, just like me and just like Cyclic. Everybody was talking about Andromeda and his exponential skill increase. There were growing suspicions around his accomplishments. Could someone really turn from okay player to extreme demon slayer in less than three weeks? No one found evidence of foul play, so apparently Apparently, the answer was yes. 
It was at this point in the investigation where I started noticing a pattern with Cyclic's personality, a trait that would eventually lead to his downfall. I personally see it as an addiction to being the best. After all, every time his reign was threatened, he directly responded with a counter to that specific player. Unfortunately for Andromeda, he was now Cyclic's target. Using his insider knowledge on the ultimate phase, Cyclic was able to complete the demon in just four days, leading many to believe that Andromeda's crowning achievement was not even as hard as Cataclysm, a level which more and more people were starting to complete. Following Giron's impressive victory, he was enlisted to verify the insane demon, Ultrasonic. After thousands of attempts, Giron, along with his Twitch chat, celebrated the level's completion. However, this celebration was short-lived as just four hours later, Cyclic would post his own completion of Ultrasonic, claiming that it took him fewer than 1,000 attempts. While this happened, Riot scrambled to be the third victor of Cataclysm, and on the 20th of May, he'd get this insane run. What he didn't know is that I beat the level literally an hour earlier than Riot. It was like a huge weight off my shoulders because I've just been grinding the level for months and months. Placing at a lacking fourth, Riot would gain a hunger to prove himself. So after I beat Cataclysm, basically the conversation happened where it was like, okay, I beat the hardest thing, now what's next? And Michigan was like, you know, actually you didn't beat the hardest thing. There's a level called ICDX and it's impossible. Nobody has beaten it. So if you want to do something that is truly impossible, then here's what you do. And that sparked something totally new in me because I had never heard of this level before. Nobody touched this thing. This level had like negative 4,000 dislikes. The creator of Ice Carbon Diablo X was Roadbos. Upon its upload, it was just one of many hacked extreme demons that were being uploaded onto the servers. In the following months, every single one of these extreme demons would either be made easier due to community pressure, be unrated due to their creator being exposed for cheating, or rarely even be outright deleted. And because of its incredibly difficult ship parts, many viewed it as the hardest rated level. To beat this level, Riot would have to develop the perfect tactic. By consistently clicking at a certain rhythm, Riot developed the ability to fly straight through any gap. The straight flying looked like the kind of straight flying you would see in one of those Cataclysm Hacker replay videos. And it took me like, I think 6,000 attempts or something. So I grinded out in two days. Cyclic and Andromeda both started as well. But they were too late. Riot got his first major victory. A day later, Andromeda completed ICDX, using his computer timer to prove that his victory was legitimate. Eventually, Cyclic followed up at a lacking third. I think the rivalry between Cyclic Ryan and Andromeda was very interesting. I'm assuming a lot of the player base back then was pretty bad. Maybe they were just logging on to YouTube to see like, oh, I've just played Stereo Madness. I want to see how crazy this game gets. What's the hardest level? How's it going? And then they log on and they see that there's these top players that are competing, trying to beat this insane level that is not even fathomable in terms of difficulty to them. Oh my God, like, are these people going to reach the pinnacle of difficulty? And who's going to do it first? First. This was where the rivalry peaked. No one at the time could have predicted that in a year it would all be exposed as a lie. Time skip to May of 2016. Andromeda had gone down in infamy as a hacker. He had been exposed shortly after claiming to be the fifth victor of Cataclysm. After apologizing to everyone, he attempted to return to the top legitimately, but he would never be in contention again. Giron was significantly less active, and he wouldn't slay a second extreme demon. While he worked on the development of Plasma Pulse 3, Smokes would have to take over as the series' main host. Sandstorm never found out what it was like to be a top player, as he was always considered second to Riot, who was undoubtedly the greatest Geometry Dash player of all time. On the other hand, Cyclic had already disappeared, shrouding himself in controversy. Everything ended up this way because of one 12 second video. I said, what's next now? And everybody's like, well, maybe we make our own level. This was Bloodbath, a new mega collab built by 11 different creators. One of them being G-Boy, who acknowledged this map as the sequel to Cataclysm. With Riot as the verifier, this level had a ton of potential. It was like a straight fly haven that was easily gonna become the number one hardest level. Bloodbath was hosted by the leader of Geostorm, Wio Wio Tio. GS was a clan containing many of Geometry Dash's top players and creators. And while it was thriving, GW was in 
ruins. Due to hacking accusations, arguments over leadership, and the mandatory military draft of South Korean citizens, the community was decaying. Cyclic was the last member of GW that was still capable of defeating Riot. If Bloodbath was verified, it instantly become the hardest extreme demon, and then Riot would be the clear winner of their rivalry. Cyclic needed a quick and perfect counterattack. He didn't have a creating team behind him, so he needed to make something simple, and at the time, Andromeda was still a threat, so Cyclic would decide to defeat two players with one level. He was beating all of the nine circles levels at the time, and in one of his descriptions, I think for like the level classic by Complex, he had posted a cheeky little sentence like, this is just practice for my new nine circles level with like a smile. It was just a little intimidating because it was like, oh shit, that's one of the hardest nine circles levels at the time, and this guy's beating this for practice. Cyclic used his previous experience in the editor to hastily cobble together a demon. In less than a week, a title that would soon be infamous started to echo across the community. This is Sonic Wave. Cyclic would lie to everyone, claiming that because he beat the level without recording, he decided to just cheat a showcase. Everyone believed Cyclic because he wasn't suspicious. Sonic Wave was just so weird, because the gameplay is really just not good, and the level's extremely undecorated. It's just like not great. Cyclic probably felt bad about this, but at least he was at the top again, right? Well, not yet. Rob Top decided to not raid Sonic Wave because a legitimate verification had not yet been shown. Many players didn't like Sonic Wave. The level seemed low quality, and even if it was rated, many believed it to be of less difficulty than Bloodbath. So, Cyclic decided to remove Sonic Wave from the servers, and he began work on a superior version. As this happened, he noticed Riot continuously inching forward in progress. 49%, 54%, for weeks, Cyclic went back to the level editor, attempting to better Riot. While Riot was bouncing Bloodbath, making impossible parts doable and difficult parts a bit harder, Cyclic did far more, destroying entire segments of Sonic Wave that seemed too easy. This UFO and ship part was converted into one of the most difficult wave sections of all time. The entire level was made significantly darker, making it harder to see the path to victory. After some additional decoration, Cyclic decided to lie about his verification once again, this time claiming that he had proof of his complete Completion. By slowing down the game speed and the song, he convinced everyone that he verified the hardest level yet. The new Sonic Wave was immediately raided. I didn't really suspect anything, I just know one day he just kind of deleted it and then made it the new version and I didn't really know why. I trusted Cyclic as a good player, like the whole community revered him as a god and I kind of did the same. I really didn't raise any eyebrows when it was verified. Even the best of the best couldn't make it to 30%. It was clear Cyclic was in the lead for this race right? Well, this is where history gets weird. To give you some perspective, nowadays, Sonic Wave is still considered to be one of the 150 hardest levels, while Bloodbath is nearly 200 spots below, not even in the top 300. It's straight fly versus wave. And that was the argument. It's like, well, it depends on what you're better at. Clearly now it's not even close. Because both of these levels were mostly incomprehensible to the community, they actually saw this as an even fight. It's like Cyclic was meant to lose. Even if he did the impossible, it didn't matter, and barely anyone would care. While discussions of Cyclic's legitimacy were ongoing, Riot was struggling to finish Bloodbath. Damn. I felt completely alone in the fact that nobody else could relate to what I was trying to do at the time. I will still say to this day, it was probably the most stressful thing I've ever dealt with in my life. I've had some stressful things in my personal life and really tough shit happened, but it is so weird to say that this level in a video game was so mentally taxing and stressful. I remember frequently I would get so mad I would just leave my stream on and just go sit outside on like the road and just throw rocks or some shit because I was so upset and I just wanted it to be over. And when I died at 94, I nerfed it because I just couldn't take it anymore. Riot didn't know it yet, but on one fateful morning, he would start a stream to beat Bloodbath for the very last time. Whack. Oh my god! <gasps> I was seriously crying when I beat the level because it was such a relief. It was... it was a lot. Finally, all of Riot's work paid off, and Bloodbath was the new hardest level on the demon list. Technically, far more difficult hacked maps existed, but Riot got there fair and square. This exact moment would begin Cyclic's demise. As Riot became more and more popular, Cyclic became more and more hated by the community. This would cause the unthinkable to happen. Someone had beaten Sonic Wave legitimately, but clearly this isn't the Sonic Wave that you and I know. For an unknown reason, the level was turned into a buffed version of the main level back on track. Cyclic's other levels, Lunar Intoxication, the Invisible series, and Ice Cream were all turned into free demons and eventually deleted. 
There was no explanation for any of this, but soon the community would be met with a few words. Upon the release of 2.0, GD accounts now had the ability to contain community posts. Cyclic used this feature to say, sorry, no comeback, just a little disappointed. Most viewers of this comment naturally thought he was talking about the community, but I think he was disappointed in himself. Cyclic probably felt like he couldn't return without feeling guilty for hacking. After all, most still believed he was a legitimate player. As Cyclic faded away, Riot was far ahead. He began development on a level that if verified could change the community forever. In a few months, a project dubbed the Yadagarasu would start to take flight. Riot also started a brand new demon list, one that promised to stop hackers in their tracks. I think Riot is a very just person. He has such a good nature and such good intentions. He takes it so far. It's crazy what he does. He DM'd me and he's like, can you try and get me to be list moderator? And I did and they said no. <laughs> and then Riot was like, I'm not gonna take no for an answer. He basically was texting me, borderline harassing me, Riot, until I managed to get him secured. He joins the team, he doesn't agree with what we're doing, and so he never talks in there ever again. And then he started DMing me at one point about wanting to start a new demon list. Just the lengths that this guy goes to to get what he thinks is right is insane. And I really, really fucking respect that about him. It was around this time that Riot would notice his popularity starting to affect his real life. There was a time in junior year of high school when I was in a history class. Somehow this teacher had heard about it and what I had done. He was like, you know, I heard from the grapevine, you play this game and you post it on YouTube and you're pretty good. And he brought it up one time in the start of the class in front of everybody. And it was the most awkward thing ever. Of course, something I never, ever wanted to deal with because I was shy and like a reserved kid in, in school besides when I was saying out with my friends. I had to try to kind of really quickly in a couple sentences, shut down the conversation, but also give them enough information to like satisfy him and make him not ask any more questions because it was so awkward. So yeah, while Riot's real life may seem somewhat normal in the Geometry Dash community, he was king. I beat like 30 demons or something in 24 hours. It was crazy. Riot helped G-Boy verify a new, harder version of Cataclysm which Sandstorm was first to slay. The one-sided clash between Riot and Sandstorm would soon become a lot more interesting due to one key factor. It seemed as quickly as he left that he would return. Cyclic quickly beat New Cataclysm, a map which dropped to the third place spot as a new extreme demon called the Hell Factory was released. It was created by a group of Korean creators known as Team N2. Upon Cyclic's return, Team N2 told him about their second project, a bizarre phantasm. Cyclic was dead set on overcoming Bloodbath and after thousands of attempts, he'd get his best run yet. What lied ahead was an intimidating maze of keys. Forget the placements of even one of them and you're sure to die. Cyclic memorized everything, and after all of his efforts, a bizarre phantasm was still placed second to Bloodbath. Most people thought Riot would remain unchallenged for months. Cyclic must have been disappointed by this result, and this likely led him to starting his most risky plan yet. He told his viewers that he had actually beaten a copy of the Hellzone, a once infamous old extreme demon that was now forgotten by the modern community. Cyclic would enlist a new team of creators to create an even harder, more decorated version of the Hellzone. Despite having to start a new channel, Cyclic had regained his fan base. Everybody wanted him to return, including me, and it was cool to see him come back. While Riot's new project was struggling at sluggish pace, Cyclic was able to quickly gain progress on the Hellzone. Now, you probably know what happens next. It's the day that Cyclic would ruin his reputation. Quickly after the Hellzone was uploaded, it would be criticized by investigators. The gameplay is very strange. It has such ridiculous parts that like no real verifier would ever want to actually play. Why would you put yourself through playing this terrible part with bad unbalanced gameplay that is really inconsistent? After all of this controversy, Cyclic would finally upload the confession. I used Verify Hack to verify the Hellzone. And for Sonic Wave, yes, I hacked at level 2. I was scared about what will happen if I admit, so I kept denying. I'm very sorry to all Geometry Dash players and to all people who believed me. I specifically remember being in my friend's house and being absolutely shocked because we had watched Cyclic Cataclysm together. It was new to us that someone that we respected so much was a cheater and the recognition that we had for them was kind of undeserved. At first I doubted it, but then after all the stuff was being removed, I was like, oh wow, he, he actually isn't legit. So I, I was pretty disappointed for a while. Riot was in denial. Dude, I really don't understand. This is the this thing. Is 
crazy. It it's actually it changes yeah. everything. And this is around the time I was messaging him on Skype and trying to talk to him. I wasn't really trying to push him to give me an answer on whether he was cheating or not. I just generally asked him and he said he hacked or cut them all and that the streams he made were all pre-recorded. I don't know. He just reacted weird. He just deleted all the stuff. He deleted this channel. What? Right now? No, it cannot be real. I've been competing with a hacker the whole time. What is the point? What is what is life? Wow, man, he's fucking gone. Chiron being cataclysm first. <laughs> Along with Giron, Cyclic was invited to create a part in Yadagarasu. However, because of the controversy, he would be replaced. Now, there was nothing. Riot was unmatched. He verified Red World Rebirth, a harder creation of Seri's infamous level that placed fifth on the demon list. Over time, players began to see Riot's skill as suspicious. He had an unusually choppy trail pattern and seemingly irreplicable flying skill. Would a third top player be exposed for hacking? Not exactly. You see, around a year ago, Riot clicked on a video that would indirectly change millions of lives forever. It showed a Call of Duty professional winning games with his new 144Hz monitor. Since Riot wanted to get better at COD, he bought the product. What Riot didn't realize is that this purchase would have the most effect on his Geometry Dash career. The first time I opened the game, it felt like I was playing a different game because everything was so responsive. I couldn't control the ship so well. I remember at first, like the first level I beat, I thought I was cheating. Eventually I realized like, okay, it's the monitor. This game is so weird in that the game's properties fundamentally change when you're playing on a higher FPS, higher refresh rate. Well, on 144 hertz, I'm not gonna lie, it does make ship easier. Like that's the one thing that I will confirm with it. Back when he was a game developer, struggling to get even a few sales, Robtop could have probably never imagined Geometry Dash being played on high-end devices. Because of that, there's a bug that's existed in the game's code for over a decade. Monitors which outputted a higher amount of hertz made it far easier for players to react. On top of that, having a higher amount of hertz even changed the game's physics to make it easier. This meant those who played GD with normal monitors were at a huge disadvantage. The new standard was bigger and better PCs to play the game. I played the game entirely on a MacBook back then, so I did feel at a disadvantage there. I probably could have beat Cataclysm on 60 hertz. It would have taken much more time, but I don't think Bloodbath would have ever come out. That's a level that took so long to get beaten on mobile or 60 hertz, but I don't think that is something anybody should denounce or try to take away from me or any other player. The way I always viewed it is it's a tool that can unlock your fullest potential, you know? He's just such a skilled video gamer that I'm not surprised if he didn't have 144 hertz back in the day I bet he still would have been a top player in contention maybe not to the level that he was maybe bloodbath would have never come out but that was definitely the advantage that he had that made him stand so far away from everybody in terms of skill seeing this made me wonder who was in the wrong was it riot for unintentionally getting and using a monitor that gave him an advantage over everyone was it robtop for making geometry dash's physics engine so scuffed or was it cyclic for you know cheating Reg Regardless, I needed to know if Cyclic truly hacked everything, so I reached out to several moderators of the modern demon list for some answers. Nowadays, the vast majority of people consider Cyclic's achievements null and void. It makes sense considering Cyclic himself supported the allegations. I questioned if I was a fool for being skeptical about this apology for all these years. The only thing the Cyclic really hacked was uh, the Hell Zone and uh, Sanic Wave. Eventually, after hours of research, the demon list members finally realized the truth. There was no evidence of cuts or other cheating tactics. Considering that some of these videos are up to 8 years old, surely Cyclic couldn't have developed cheating methods years ahead of his time. Especially since people were so easily able to detect that he cheated both Sonic Waves and the Hell Zone. This leads me to believe that Cyclic's initial apology was the truth, but upon the conversation with Riot, he decided one thing. His legacy deserved to be tarnished. After all, he was a hacker. There's no gray area. He was guilty of being a hacker, and that's that. After finding this out, I was able to reach out to Cyclic through a message and he said, I don't want to care anymore. I want to be free now. Thank you very much for the offer, but I decline it. All of his replays looked the same, so if he came out as a, like, a hacker, I just assumed all of his achievements were hacked, but it, now that you're saying that, I'm not sure. The way he explained it, he definitely didn't cheat everything he did, and maybe he just didn't want to be around anymore, and yeah, it was just an easy cop-out to like say that you cheated everything. During my interview with Riot, I realized I wasn't the only person who believed in Cyclic for all of these years. Ironically, Cyclic's greatest rival has also never believed in the lies. 
believe that he's actually this is actually real. What I think is going on is I think he's so pissed at himself for hacking the two levels that he's just gonna lie about hacking everything. Despite what you may think or what you say about like the whole hacking thing, I was always friends with him. I never took it personally. He's such like a wholesome, strange individual and uh, he's fun to talk to. He's a cool guy. Cyclic is one of the greatest GD players of all time, but I don't think he'll ever admit it. Sadly, nowadays, his guilt seems to stick around. Sure, I may remember him as a legend, the first player to dethrone a notorious hacker, the first player to slay an extreme demon, and the only 60 Hz player who could compete with Riot. But Cyclic may remember himself as someone who folded under the pressure, and a cheater who became exactly what he once fought against. What can you really do when life's set up against you? Cyclic had two clear choices. He could either stay completely legit, and right into the sunset off of his already impressive legacy, slowly becoming overshadowed by Riot. Or he could continue his futile battle with Riot, even if it meant compromising years of genuine effort and his reputation. To be honest, I completely understand how he felt. Hard effort may beat talent when talent fails to work hard, but considering how hard Riot worked, I feel like his reign was inevitable. No player was ever going to beat him without joining him first. This gap of skill catalyzed a new generation of 144Hz players who were more skilled than ever. Nowadays, people play on frame rates as high as 360 for more consistency and barely any of the top 100 levels have been beaten by 60Hz players. Eventually, Riot would try to verify Sonic Wave, and he even started a sequel level of his own called Sonic Wave Infinity on the side. This is where the rivalry story ends for most people, because after failing at 96% on Sonic Wave, Riot would hand off Bloodbath's spiritual successor Yadagarasu to the up-and-coming 144Hz player Serve, who was not only the best of the new generation, but now arguably the best in the world. World. Riot started oh to distance himself from Geometry Dash and what he didn't realize is that this decision would begin his downfall. You see, there's still one more question to answer. Who won the greatest rivalry in Geometry Dash? It is only through looking at the legacy that each of these five players left behind that we can get a true answer. For months, Andromeda had been surrounded by drama due to his controversial past. He failed to develop the weird extreme demon Inevitable Doom, and over time, Andromeda's dislike of the GD community developed. It seemed his journey would end in a crash and slow burn. But eventually, he realized he couldn't leave GD on such a negative note. So, he decided to redeem himself. Andromeda embarked on a journey through the road of redemption, and he attempted to beat all of his hacked achievements. After thousands of attempts, he got closer and closer to his goal until finally He did it. While these achievements were no longer enough to make him a top player, he would still go down in Geometry Dash history as a legend despite once being a controversial cheater. Okay, so that's done. As for Giron, while he started to become inactive, he would indirectly reach the peak of the demon list. Over time, the Plasma Pulse level series he started with Smokes would continue to get progressively more difficult entries. The series would peak with the release of the fourth Plasma Pulse level. Smokes would successfully finish off what Giron started, verifying Plasma Pulse finale, which would proceed to place number one on the demon list. Nowadays, Giron goes by Giro and is still somewhat active, posting the occasional replay. One of ten. Easy level. <laughs> A few months after his exposal, Cyclic started a new channel which contained some interesting videos. To me, certain achievements like getting 75% on Bloodbath while streaming serve as further proof that he didn't hack nearly as much as he claimed to. He also made a part in the Sonic Wave remake Cosmic Cyclone. Along with that, Sonic Wave was verified by Sonix and it's become the fourth most downloaded extreme demon of all time. It's also gotten a ton of remakes, some of which are very popular. Once in a while, Cyclic will post a replay or even start a stream where he and his viewers will reminisce about the good old days. <laughs> in spite of his hacked achievements, most still respect him and he was commemorated on the art of Geometry Dash's 10 year anniversary. Currently, Cyclic is in the middle of his mandatory South Korean military service. Cyclic, on the offhand chance you're watching this, good luck out there. You'll always be one of the most inspiring Geometry Dash players to me, and I'll never forget how you push the game forward, even if you don't acknowledge it. I'm not busy right now, so I'm not playing this game often. After getting a 144Hz monitor, Sandstorm would return to GD in 2018.
2018 and emerged as the most skilled of the former rivals. He now had the ability to beat some of Geometry Dash's hardest levels and was still able to compete with the newer generation. Most impressively of all, he was finally able to call himself number one on a game he was passionate about. Not in Geometry Dash, but a fighting game known as Brawlhalla. There's a one in a million chance that someone passionate about esports is actually able to have a successful career from it, but Sandstorm did it. To this day, Sandstorm is not only active in the fighting game community, but also GD, which he plans to play once the long-awaited update 2.2 releases. That is it! Sandstorm is the world champion! He is the greatest of all time in Brawlhalla! This leaves Riot, who is about to meet a terrible fate. Before leaving Geometry Dash entirely, Riot would release one final video. He announced a demon that he, Cyclic, and several others had worked on. It was called Tartarus, and if you were somehow able to beat a level this difficult, he'd shout you out on his channel, which was about to go big. He had that thing after he left Geometry Dash, he went into Fortnite, and he started freaking blowing up because he killed Ninja. Oh my god, bro. This character is Riot, R-I-O-T. I just killed Dr. Lupo. Uh, what? No way, you just won that. Yeah, that was the nuttiest game of my life. I felt like I had gotten a lucky break in that it was all part of my plan to like try to do something with my YouTube after like G and it was working. Just as Wright received his lucky break, his channel would be terminated. You see, YouTube used to have an obscure, barely enforced rule where if you linked a site like Twitch in your description, you could be banned. Suddenly, it seemed like Riot's chance at being successful had vanished. I was about to take a break from college for a semester to see where this could go. And it was devastating because, you know, it was just all taken away from me. I didn't want to go back to school, so I got into the real world and got a real job. I mean, I think it was ultimately the thing that I needed to make me into the person I am today, which is much tougher mentally and much more experienced in life. After a harsh reality check, Riot refused to back down and continued trying to improve his life. During these years, despite being barely involved in the GD community, many projects he was once a part of met their conclusion. Although, Riot still had one more loose end that he wanted to tie up. He made a bet with the GD community that if they helped bring his channel back, he would finally beat Sonic Wave. Nowadays, the rule Riot was banned for was defunct, so the community rallied behind him and thousands posted hashtag free Riot. Finally, his channel was back, and this meant that he would have to once again face the controversial creation of his old friend. It was like a level I never thought I could do. But everything came together when I got my channel back, because just like Sonic Wave, it was something that I thought was impossible. And I made the promise, and I knew it was something I could do because I was reinvigorated. I was like, I, I know I can do this. The thing is, I have many problems that make themselves much more prominent when I'm actually playing this game specifically. Bloodbath is the level that gave me hand problems, because I've played it so much. These are all things that I had to come to terms with and figure out a way to solve them, because Sonic Wave, like I said before, is something that had haunted me since I got 96% and I lost the race. It was such a big mental block. It was the first time it was really like made clear to me that I was no longer the best player. I had many, many, many last wave 90 deaths, but I just kept grinding because I knew eventually that I could do this. And... Holy... Oh my God, am I living in the real world right now? Is this a f***ing simulation? It's not, no, it's real, it's real. And the levels are called demons, right? But it's like I really defeated my inner demon of something that had haunted me for years. Yeah, just a defining moment in not even just like my Geometry Dash playing career, just like my life. It's overcoming something that was such a bad mental block. Even after this triumph, Riot wasn't done. To this day, he's still involved in the creation of insane GD levels, most notably Acheron, which much like Tartarus helped push Geometry Dash's difficulty limits forward. Riot is also involved in Eternus. Whoever is somehow able to beat this level first will go down as a legend. Good luck if you're trying to go for it. It's definitely harder than anything else that's been completed. So, after all of this, you may wonder how I'm going to determine who truly won this rivalry. If I valued peaks, it would be Riot, but if I valued consistency, it would be Sandstorm, and if I valued a variety of skill, it would be Cyclic, but that's not something I want to do. The truth is, the winner of Geometry Dash's greatest rivalry is you and everyone who's ever played this game. If this competition didn't happen, Geometry Dash wouldn't have been as interesting, hype, 
and popular as it is nowadays, so in many ways, we all benefit. These five players have pushed this game's limits and have impacted millions of lives. They have even used the skills they learned in Geometry Dash to try to become their best selves in real life. Their futures will be very interesting and I hope their story inspires you to become your best self. I sincerely thank you for watching this video. Good luck out there, and I'll see ya later.